Hi everyone, Dr. Nemechek here. I want to talk about the safety of rifaximin as well as uh, uh, why we refer to it as a eubiotic. Uh, but first I want to just give a shout out. We had a shout out. We had a very nice family here uh, from Hawaii. They brought me some macadamia nuts and Maui coffee and uh, a nice little cap and I appreciate it very much. I'll be uh, I get these nice little uh, gifts quite frequently, and so I'm going to start just sharing with everybody uh, how nice uh, the patients are when they come here to visit me. All right, Rifaxman. Why do we use Rifaxman over other antibiotics? Well, there's several reasons, but first let's talk about what we're using it for. So this graphic that you see here is an outline a very simplified outline of the balance of your intestinal bacteria. So you have the stomach flowing into the small intestine, into the large intestine or colon. These families of bacteria live down here and these tend to live up here. All right, and you have a ratio of one bacteria to 100 million bacteria. So they refer to the small intestine as almost being sterile. All right, there's very, very few bacteria up there and you may have about four trillion bacteria in the large intestine, so that's normal. And you have about a thousand species. Now, SIBO, S-I-B-O, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, all right? This is when you have normal bacteria that should be living in the large intestine, now living in the small intestine. This is not foreign bacteria, it's not bad bacteria, they're normal bacteria, and when you have overgrowth, it's typically one, maybe two species up there, okay? There's there's probably a thousand down here and one, maybe two up there. It's not all the different types. And this is uh, what causes leaky gut, a lot of problems, a lot of symptoms, and we use Profaxman for this preferentially. Why is that? Okay, here, so, one of the issues is that it, it's it's very safe, okay, and but and a big part of that is because none of less than one percent can ever be found in the bloodstream, okay. It's almost nearly not absorbed at all, and if a drug doesn't get in the bloodstream, it can't say travel around and irritate your liver or affect your kidneys or you get to your brain, okay? And so uh, it's very, very safe in that regards. And <clears throat> because of that, I have on my list down here, um, if you're on drugs for epilepsy or something like that, those drugs are in the bloodstream, rifaximin is not. So you don't have any drug-drug interactions, all right? And the safety of this, uh, when you compared it's the same as placebo so in a study you have people get a drug other people get like a sugar pill placebo and then you can look at all the different things how well it works but you also look at like the side effects Rifaximin has the same side effects as a sugar tablet okay meaning almost none that's what that really means and so now it so it doesn't get in the bloodstream two it has broad spectrum activity against the bacteria that live in the colon. So broad spectrum activity against these bacteria, not against these bacteria. All right. And you think, well, that still doesn't sound good. Are you going to wipe out the bacteria in the large intestine? No, because it is only effective in the small intestine. All right only works up here so it can kill these bacteria but it only works up here and the reason for that is rifaximin needs bile to be active so you swallow the pills comes in and now you're having bile dripping in here it will combine with rifaximin now let's go here now it will kill off the colon bacteria here the fish it's not going to harm the birds. It leaves the birds behind. It's an active, 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 active. I don't have it here. 
on the graphic, but what happens is all the bile gets reabsorbed into the bloodstream here, okay? And the drug basically crystallizes and deactivates. So it won't kill the bacteria here. So whichever one or two species that were growing up here that you killed off, you're still gonna have copies of those down here. So you aren't gonna lose them, all right? It's the only antibiotic that does this, okay? It's effective against archaea. Now, a lot of patients, you if you've been treated by a doctor, they may give you like a rifaximin and, and neomycin or a rifaximin and uh, metronidazole. That second drug is for this other organism called archaea. I don't have it on my chart, but archaea can overgrow here along with the bacteria and archaea is what when people are talking about like a methane positive breath test that's from archaea and so that's why the docs add metronidazole or neomycin i don't ask add those because rifaximin is very effective against archaea too so it'll kill off the archaea that are up here now again it's not active so it won't harm them when they're down here but it will kill off the archaea as well as those fish bacteria from the colon, okay? And there's very little risk of resistance, almost none. Now, how do we know this? Well, they've used rifaximin. So when you get this condition, here where you have overgrowth, and you have an extremely badly damaged liver, okay? Like you might need a transplant if it gets worse. When you get overgrowth with that bad liver, it's a condition called hepatic encephalopathy and you might die, all right? And so they put patients on rifaximin to control this so these liver patients don't die and they take it twice a day, nonstop, year after year. And they've been doing this for about 20 years, okay? There's a lot, a lot of practical experience here they don't find uh, chronic drug resistance developing from that. And then in a more modern level, you can take a sampling of uh, the bacteria and you can evaluate the DNA and look for resistance to rifaximin and they can't find it. So totality, we got rifaximin A, doesn't get in the bloodstream, so uh, it, it won't cause side effects, it won't interact with your other medicines. Two, it only kills the fish, the colon bacteria, but it only works in, and it won't kill the birds, but it only works in the small intestine. And literally, the only thing it can do is treat SIBO. The breath test that people use to diagnose SIBO is less accurate than if you just take a round of rifaximin for 10 days even, and you just say, wow, I feel better. Boom, you got SIBO, okay? And uh, it's very, very safe. So that's why I, I use a lot of continuous rifaximin when people are, are pretty sick, have a lot of neurological problem. I might keep them on continuous for four months because they'll relapse quickly if I don't. And uh, they do just great. We have some people who have needed to be on continuous rifaximin for years, and that's because they relapse so fast that we have some motility problem in the gut and we just can't get that fixed yet. So um, very, very safe. That's why we call this a eubiotic. I'll put a couple references in the uh, description below. And so if you need, uh, you can print these papers off and show them to your gastroenterologist so they won't uh, give you more rifaximin. That's all for today, everybody. Uh, have a great day. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Click the button below. Thank you.